Good evening. We will begin in exactly two minutes from now. Thank you. Good evening, Geeta. If you can please uh, come on screen. Thank you. Good evening, Riaz. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, good evening to everybody and a very warm welcome from Sandeep and Gitanjali Mining Foundation. And it's an absolute pleasure to, for me to bring to you today's talk, Hood, Building Artistic Communities by Riaz Komal. At SGMF, with its core ideals of promoting art, culture, heritage, our endeavor is to host diverse topics, broaden the horizon, and expand the reach of artists, curators, and speakers as they so desire. This evening's session is indeed very special. Riaz is a dear friend, and our association goes back several years. Riaz, as we all well know, is an important artist, curator, mentor, and much more. He has been intrinsically involved with us at several levels in all three of our organizations. As co-founder of Kochi Museries Binale, Riaz has been associated as an artist and mentor for upcoming artists. The student Binale at KMB, which was his brainchild, has had an unbelievable pathway for recognizing budding talents. At SGMF, he adds value and his thought-provoking interpretation for the special Malla photography session we hosted by Shibu Arakal was hugely appreciated. Last but not least, his attachment to Raja Ravi Varma and the Heritage Foundation. He has been uniquely involved, beginning with his digital photography back in the day when he was a student with RRB's lithographic stones. Holistically involved in many of our endeavors, Riaz is now for us just like family. Riaz is someone who stretches the boundaries with his art and thought. It stokes and fires and stirs your conscience. Borrowing from his Young Subcontinent project, which he curated for the Serendipity Art Festival at Goa in 2017, Riaz will shortly tell us about the aesthetics of neighborhood art and why he believes there is a pressing need to forge artistic communities among the neighboring countries. At Serendipity, his attempt was to remediate to the scattered political boundaries across India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, Afghanistan, and Maldives after the colonial encounter. He highlights in the ancestral bonds in the civilization memory of people of these diverse nationalities. The project showcased artistic discussions 
of representational future of South Asia. These days, webinars are a dime and a dozen, and, but we have found our audience very engaging, interested, and keen to be part of the talks simply because the content we are hoping to put out and have been doing thus far is both diverse and distinct. The last two webinars SGMF hosted, The Evolution of Bangalore Through the Architectural Lens by Sri Pankaj Modi and The Untold Story of Mysore Lancers by Srimati Yashaswini Sharma drew in a massive response through her Facebook Live with more than 15 and 18,000 people logging in and listening. So to each and everyone who is watching us on Facebook, a very warm welcome from us at SGMF. So without taking any more time and uh, to very quickly run through what the admin calls the basic rules. Um, if you have any questions as the speaker is speaking, there is a question answer box at the bottom. Feel free to punch in your questions and we will have a Q&A session where we'll take it to him. I will bring in the questions from Facebook personally so that we can try and cover as many questions as we can in the session. Uh, there's also a polling uh, at the bottom. So feel free to press in and uh, you know, poll and make your suggestions, whatever it is. So whatever uh, you need to ask, feel free to just punch it in there. So thank you once again for joining. And Riaz, a very warm welcome. Thank you for taking time out to do the session for us. And now over to you. Good evening, uh, uh, everyone. And thank you, uh, Sandeep and uh, Gita for uh, inviting me. Uh, and also all the other members of uh, Sandeep and uh, Gita Anjali Mani Foundation, uh, and especially Archana I mean, who's been you know, coordinating with me. And uh, I feel so happy uh, to share uh, my journey through subcontinent and also the, the learnings uh, which I had uh, since, uh, since, since many years. And uh, under the aesthetics of uh, a neighborhood, uh, I have made uh, uh, four different categories uh, to, to, to do this uh, particular presentation. So let me, you know, uh, start uh, by sharing uh, this way. Riaz, while you're putting on the screen, uh, I'm just going to request you to speak a little louder or closer to the microphone, please. Yeah. Thank you. This one. request you to make it full screen, Riaz, and yeah, thank you. Riaz, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to switch on my camera. No, no. When you're sharing screen, you will not be able to. Oh, Achha, you have to... Oh, okay. yeah. 
maybe yeah that could be it i mean if you can do both that will be great yeah. share screen and be seen no, because in this option i'm not finding that anyway. no i think you can just go ahead and proceed rias yeah yeah good evening uh, uh, everyone again and thank you uh, sandeep and geeta uh, and also all the other members of uh, uh, you know uh, gallery g and uh, you know sandeep and mine foundation and uh, especially archana and ravi and uh, i feel so happy to share my journey through the subcontinent and the learnings uh, i had and uh, under the title of uh, aesthetics of neighborhood i have made four uh, different uh, categories and i would like to kind of uh, start with uh, uh, nation as a uh, neighborhood so the map uh, which you are seeing uh, actually takes you back uh, the politically political history of the last uh, century uh, has actually uh, left the world separated into nationalistic boundaries and that has induced uh, tremendous insecurities and in notions of identity and cultures uh, across the world as we see this map we realize that how scattered our nation was the attempt of the independent state of india initially was to address this internal kind of fragmented realities the value of uh, friendship openness and tolerance in the diverse landscape of india were sought through the formation of neighborhood through the setting up of several cultural institutions because of such vision the first two decades of india after its independence under the leadership of a uh, respected prime minister jawaharlal nehru so the setting up of a number of cultural and educational institutions across the country the amount of work went in building a unified india was imagined through projects to establish educational institutions infrastructure projects industries cultural inhabits and many more it was important to redefine the nation as neighborhood to build the spirit and unity of the idea of sharing among commonalities of cohabit and the communities of cohabitation we saw a lot of cultural economic migration happening uh, in the early uh, years uh, as a structured phenomenon we saw multicultural societies communities building around such enterprises the institutions of cultural and education were set up through the disposition of scientific timber and aimed at sharing and celebrating these centrally funded institutions aimed at providing equal platform to the people of india and here it's very important to say that i mean you know jawaharlal nehru along with uh, his uh, you know colleague uh, the first education minister maulana abu kalam azad instituted many academies which are you know spread all across the country and to revive uh, the heritage and culture of uh, you know the nation and it in, in fact it has played a big role in unifying our nation and uh, i would also like to you know bring in the point that i mean you know uh, jawaharlal nehru was the first chairperson of sahitya academy when he was the prime minister of the country it also shows you know the commitment towards uh, our cultural heritage you know our our leadership had and another important junction in connection with uh, you know the topic which we are discussing because it is more of art uh, you know the the manifesto which was uh, shared by you know uh, maulana abdul kalam azad had a very you know reflective uh, approach you know towards like I mean, what's our nation all about and in fact it also came into existence uh, uh, as part of the manifesto of the first uh, triennial in the world when india began it in delhi and i would say that i mean you know it was uh, an expression of opening the doors to the art doors to the arts especially the arts of that time from all across the world so now i'm going to the next section uh, of uh, you know this particular presentation that where 
city becomes uh, a neighborhood. I mean, the city as a neighborhood. Uh, I would, you know, bring in, you know, the, the, the second wave of uh, such transition of opening uh, happened uh, when India uh, started uh, liberalizing its economy. This was the time I decided actually to become uh, a textile designer. Then I took admission in JJ School of Art in Mumbai to study textile design. As you all remember, you know, it was the year you know, our nation uh, went through major social shift, religious violence and political chaos. I mean, 1992 was an important year in India's history. So, uh, I mean, as a student, like, I mean, you know, studied in you know, the Kerala campuses, I mean, the political antenna literally went up and I decided to become an artist instead of you know, becoming a textile designer. And uh, I think, you know, the Bombay became my second home. And then I grew up in, you know, Mumbai uh, uh, as an artist and uh, moved around the gullies and uh, you know, lived in, you know, lived with uh, literally limited resources in the hostel, but, uh, you know, with great levels of uh, ambition. In fact, uh, you know, I've seen many uh, people saying that, I mean, Mumbai is one of the greatest universities. Uh, uh, in the world. I mean, you know, in fact, I have experienced that. I mean, because uh, me being an artist, I mean, I would uh, you know, assert by saying that Mumbai had great infrastructure and patronage uh, in comparison with other cities. And it allowed also me to you know, explore uh, many possibilities of art making, you know, from the early years. I mean, I was you know, allowed to experiment in the campus. You know, I had great, uh, you know, mentorship. Uh, so, one second, that is... And uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, it had a, a great, I mean, as I said, I mean, it had great infrastructure and, uh, and uh, one interesting thing which I adopted was like, I mean, the idea of being a Mumbaiker. I mean, I, in fact, I mean, joined the resilient spirit, which I could see around uh, in a city like Bombay. And as you all know that, I mean, most of the Indian cities uh, attracted uh, a lot of migrants towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, especially uh, at the time of uh, 1990, post 1990s because of liberalization, many manufacturers, I mean, many infrastructural projects came up and, uh, uh, but we see that, I mean, when you look uh, uh, deeply, like, I mean, you see, you know, people are migrating, you know, uh, to the city because of caste discriminations and ex economic struggles that uh, uh, were spread around in our Indian villages. And, you know, uh, that's the time, like, I mean, I started, uh, looking at migrants as a subject to kind of work on. So, uh, but the many questions, I mean, as an artist, my mind was always around thinking that, uh, how do we create a site to engage and uh, how do we use the idea of, uh, you know, uh, the diversity and multiculturalism and plurality uh, by celebrating the histories of uh, human settlements. I mean, in Mumbai as a city it teaches you a lot. I mean, it's one of the most cosmopolitan you know, cities in the world, and also, you know, uh, religion uh, as a topic. How do we, you know, discuss religion in times like this? So, uh, it, in fact, I mean, you know, it became, uh, I'm not able to move my slides. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just yeah, not... Just exit, from, uh, just exit from the full screen mode. Yeah, now it's moving in. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the you know, uh, disruption. And uh, and as I said that, I mean, you know, all, all these years I've been thinking about, I mean, a site to descend. And uh, in fact, I've been able to manage uh, to express uh, it through, through my works, uh, my concerns, and also many other projects which I have engaged in, in my life, uh, you know, so far. So, as I said, I was in Bombay City. I mean, I got many opportunities, like, I mean, uh, uh, to, to travel. I think one of the places where I traveled was Pakistan, Karachi. And I spent, uh, you know, quite a good amount of time 
an almost a month uh, and i got this residency as part of the coach initiative i was invited by the wassel uh, to be in a present and i'm just saying this because you know these were you know this was something which existed i mean there was a triangle residency program connected sri lanka bangladesh and uh, 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 sri lanka pakistan and uh, india so people were about to i mean they were able to travel together live together work together so there was this you know the erasing of the borders through this kind of you know, you know through, through projects so but one interesting you know learning which i had was one of the major cultural sites uh, called uh, tatta and uh, which is you know in the in the indus belt the, and i visited a place called makli nakropolis it's one of the you know the largest uh, burial sites uh, in the world and i could document that in fact i have shown this as the karachi series as one of my uh, you know exhibition projects and in reflection to that i mean i was able to, i was also able to kind of produce many exhibitions you know what you're seeing the images like i mean you know an exhibition from uh, you know the title faith a complete and uh, so so the so the art practice like i mean you know had a kind of a you know a liberating experience and i was able to kind of understand you know the socio political premises in relation with the time so i'm just trying to kind of bring your attention to a certain period that i mean india was like i mean you know very much known in the art was also very much known in the domain so it was at the time of the art boom you know so it was a time that you know the creative expressions were finding great appreciation in the market i mean many indian international shows were traveling many western curators came down and you know they took many shows the indian highway indian summer and new galleries came up and uh, new term you know i mean the people were listening the new terms like art dealers and art consultants and uh, relationships also with the international museums were coming up you know many international travel camps were introduced by collectors so young art collectors were you know uh, emerging many residency programs coming so i'm saying that i mean you know before this you know the coming to the mpn subcontinent as an idea there were multiple experiences of such sort but it was limited to kind of you know to few people i mean whose work were traveling who were engaged with galleries or you know who were connected i mean in one way so uh, so in 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 one way like i mean this art boom time has to be you know also understood like i mean you know the artist life and the infrastructure uh, and the production facilities also went up i mean generally you know we all say that i mean you know we still remember it was a great time economically for artists and also the others who engaged uh, with art but uh, you know even Uh, you know what happens is like i mean you know you hit by a recession so this is the time like uh, you know it's a crucial time you know uh, for the world as we all know it but uh, the art world uh, was uh, you know the art world uh, in india was like i'm in trouble because the western you know market was here I mean, so i remember i mean being part of many friendly conversations when things became slow uh, and uh, the discussions revolved around I mean, how do we survive such troubling times because the the market was going down and i remember conversations which moved around creating you know sites of experiment alternate engagements or creative production or explore you know new possibilities I and mean, so and it was very much in the air that everybody i mean anybody you meet institutions galleries you know curators artists i mean they all you know were concerned about uh, building our own ecosystem i mean they were interested like i mean you know we all have to work together to kind of you know to build an ecosystem for our region and how do we educate the system about the importance of art you know how do we make art accessible to people how do we educate people about understanding social economy you know how do we build patronage by the side by the state i mean uh, the state as a you know uh, you know i would say that i mean you know in, in our in, in in our region i mean you know, it is it is it's very limited i mean in, in the post covid crisis we saw some of the major international you know country, i mean major countries like i mean you know, you know giving money to to rejuvenate the kind of cultural site i mean we as a nation have not done that so that's one reason i'm just bringing you know uh, or that point also what are you know what are our existing you know institutions doing that's another question which you know uh, we were asking you know also at that time you know is art capable of healing wounds 
you know, sees art can be a kind of a healer in, 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 in times of violence and chaos and, you know, atrocities. So this is, uh, you know, uh, I would say like, I mean, you know, this is also the time like, you know, uh, in, 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 in my mind uh, uh, that uh, the idea of like, I mean, you know, uh, would kind of you know, slowly, you know, to this premise, I mean, I would bring that, you know, the, the third section of our conversation that uh, I would say that, you know, in, in along with these kind of questions and multiple arguments that, I mean, you know, we made or we found the site to descend as Kochi, you know, that, I mean, Kochi was introduced as a site to descend to the world, to make new communities through art making, you know, forming, you know, a neighborhood of ideas and artful thinking, you know, reaching out uh, to roots uh, while we establish equation uh, with the world. So as uh, Pochi was uh, designed as a multidisciplinary uh, biennial, it immediately became a site of a much needed cultural acupuncture the country needed by bringing major art practitioners, inviting scholars, curators, museum directors. Uh, I think, you know, the making even that huge scale works, great interventions, you know, by celebrating, you know, the, the diversity, multiculturalism of a location, history of a settlement. You know, Kochi, you know, Kochi is a place that where 40 different communities live together in a four kilometer square. I mean, so it's a microcosm of you know, a larger India. So it immediately, with all these effects that, I mean, Kochi became, you know, the pride of the locals. And, you know, it actually kind of refreshed that, uh, you know, uh, the badge of honor, which all they carry that, I mean, you know, as a cosmopolitan location. And Kochi becomes in a larger art world that people's biennial because immediately, you know, Kochi made art accessible to people and it changed their perceptions about art making and contemporary art. It narrated in one way, you know, another uh, uh, perspectives about our time. I mean, it, it was uh, going deeper uh, into the history uh, of, 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 of those uh, uh, locations. So, uh, uh, in fact, uh, you know, another point which I would like to make is that, uh, you know, uh, that there were ripple effects. I mean, you know, because as, the, as people realize the moment you take art into people, I mean, you know, people were actually accepting it as the kind of a revolutionary moment to kind of understand different multiple kind of languages. So we see that, I mean, many patrons came up, you know, they, they supported the institutionalizing of it. And, you know, they themselves like, I mean, started like, I mean, institutionalizing their collections and started thinking about, thinking big for Indian art scenes. I mean, you know, gallery, in fact, the gallery started thinking experimentation because I mean, you know, uh, the moment, uh, you uh, move around, you know, such kind of premises. I mean, you know, there were, uh, there were uh, better possibilities. And uh, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 in effect, uh, because Kochi was conceived as a multidisciplinary biennial, I mean, a very unique one in the world, uh, I would say that, I mean, you know, Kochi uh, became uh, a site of learning. I mean, not just for the students, I mean, it's for people to understand their own culture, their own history, artists to kind of engage in research projects, you know, people to travel to, you know, a place like Kochi. So the students' binale was like, I mean, you know, I mean, was introduced uh, to, into these possibilities and patronage, which we saw, and also the new possibilities of engaging with, uh, you know, the form of alternate education, because as biennial became a site of alternate learning, uh, away from this campuses, we started engaging the art students as assistants to master the artist, art student, when the, the art school teachers supported it, uh, you know, heavily. The students became the research help for the invited master artists in the main biennial. Art students and uh, people from the multidisciplinary sites joined as interpretation, interpretation guides. And, uh, and we gave training programs for them to kind of undertake this job for four years, uh, four months. I mean, because they were handling like, I mean, you know, major curators to kind of, you know, to a student uh, from, from, from local Kochi. I mean, you know, so it's a, it's a, diver, it's, it's a language of like, I mean, also diversity they have to apply when they talk about or interpret, you know, the artwork uh, which they show around. And 
many youngsters i mean we had 300 uh, you know volunteers you know, every year i mean you know to, so they, these are all you know the process of learning so also the process we adopted for students binali was you know very unique i mean because we appointed young aspiring curators to become you know the curators of students by name i mean they came they engaged they collectively produced you know even they were given grants to travel to all art institutions to do research and uh, you know selected the students work we invited some of the insulation some of the artists for, uh, young students for insulation project at the time of the opening and almost all participating students were given travel grants to visit the biennale and also see the display of their work meet understand see the masters work you know do conversations show their portfolios i mean you know so it was kind of you know kochi you know in in their terms that i mean it was becoming a you know site of freedom to kind of express so many of them got uh, you know awards i mean this the awards were given in the form of travel grants many traveled to kind of europe and they also in some of the one group got an opportunity to see the venice biennale at that time and uh, and many of the students got pepper house residency award i mean and they came and stayed in kochi for few weeks so what happens through this process is that i mean we could you know what we were able to do is like we were able to take a blueprint of young artists i mean how they are thinking and what kind of constraints they are all working with you know and to go more deeper you know we did a very interesting collaboration and did a survey along with foundation for indian art education in 80 schools and realized that the condition of art education in india needs urgent attention and what the students lack is the power to tell their own stories because of their poor academic structure and guidance then most of them are not even aware of their own surroundings culture craft traditions i still remember you know kg subramanian talks about it i mean you know an art institution should be aware of its own surroundings i mean they should make the students aware so but you know uh, we just do like i mean we were just uh, teaching or you know we are just parachuting for the students are just learning a very colonial you know model of uh, you know art education which is like coming I mean, you know 40 45 year syllabus but in 1970s i mean the british model of education has changed but we have not uh, you know kind of even updated us so we actually do you know a lot of you know uh, i mean one of the teachers in you know baroda when i was talking to me said you know the the the, the, the campuses like i mean do plagiarism like they take the syllabus from here and they put it there and you know they just make a hitch pitch to kind of you know to this teach student so these all affects the young minds i mean and it is not just a problem you know of uh, india it is spread you know it is spread in the subcontinent i have visited you know art institutions in the subcontinent i have seen the same same effect of this colonial hangover because their aspiration is like come I mean, in europe i mean so that's where they need to re- get recognition so they leave their stories and you know they'll tell their sto- tell the other stories they they go aesthetical they go conceptual you know so it's just you know, it's, a, it's a very interesting location to kind of discuss so this was also the moment i mean you know i started looking at uh, the issues very seriously and i wanted to engage with art education in our region and then you know i devised this project called young young subcontinent and which we are going little bit more in detail and uh, you know the young subcontinent includes like i said that you know india nepal bhutan sri lanka you know pakistan bangladesh myanmar and you know uh, maldives so this was also the time that uh, uh, luckily i mean i would say that i mean it was a time that i mean i was uh, uh, you know uh, approached by serendipity art trust to become one of their consultant uh, and they also asked me to be one of the curators for visual arts for the first edition and uh, uh, which and in fact the festival was very conceived as a multidisciplinary one and i proposed young subcontinent uh, as a project in the first edition and we did manage three editions because you know it attracted you know a lot of attention and it was a, it was a project of lot of which gave lot of happiness i mean so that's how you know the the the, the journey of uh, doing the young subcontinent began so i just want to kind of you know to take you now through you know the young subcontinent project in little bit little bit in detail and uh, i think the premise uh, to some extent is set to kind of understand you know where is you know 
uh, where where are the problems? I mean, you know, what are the kind of uh, confines academically, you know, aesthetically and infrastructurally? I mean, these youngsters are you know frustrated with. So, young subcontinent was a project like I mean, you know, uh, as we say that I mean, although the South Asian, you know, the subcontinent constitutes just four percent of world's surface area, its landmass is home to one fourth of the entire world's population. People have lived here since several millennia. Life has accumulated over the time by waves of inward and out outward migrations. I mean, not, not always uh, a very peaceful stories. So these are nations, uh, you know, are beautiful and it's like beautifully connected with water, you know, mountains and these connections are helped the pollination of several cultural commonalities, the diversity of languages, myth, craft, ethnicity, faith, food, lifestyle among this entire subcontinent. However, is in its you know recent political history has brought its nations to nations into uh, very difficult equations with each other. I mean, you know, we are seeing it today. And the colonial encounter with South Asia has left also the subcontinent scattered our political boundaries. And I feel still the ancestral bones, uh, which we you know, discussed earlier, uh, is embedded in the civilizational memory of these 1.6 million people of diverse nationalities. And uh, I don't see that, I mean, when I travel, they are ruffled much. And uh, in fact, it is an investment into that. I mean, you know, the Young Subcontinent was a project which was aimed to bring artists from uh, its countries together with the hope of uh, reconciliatory confrontation. I mean, and it's very important, I mean, to in, in fact, even use that term because, I mean, you know, we found happiness, you know, when they all came together. And through a framework of, and we adopted a system that, I mean, we did, you know, uh, through framework of workshops, residencies and exhibitions, the project actually fostered dialogues while bringing up questions about the subcontinent's cultural future. And we invited scholars for workshop. You know, for each, each country, we had one representatives coming every year and coming and engaging with them. And uh, young subcontinent also helped in establishing a mechanism of patronage. And that can yeah. include, uh, in fact, confidence with the community of artists and intellectuals who are you know, serious uh, literally about the issues of challenges of the present. So from excavations to uh, archiving, you know, creating and exhibiting, uh, actually our time calls for a new phase of uh, intense thought and action. So Young Subcontinent was conceived as that platform which will nurture and uh, you know, nourish uh, the new expression. And uh, just going into you know, the details of it, I mean, for all three editions, you know, the premise of the curation was same because we thought, I mean, you know, we need to still study and study and study and go more deeper. And uh, I had, you know, the opportunity to kind of, you know, to work along with, I mean, I had the film critic and the writer, Dr. C.S. Venkateshwaran, and writer and journalist Amritla as my curatorial consultants. And, you know, I mean, and like, I mean, in fact, we were travel partners and uh, we researched together along with, you know, my dear uh, assistant, Anuj Daga. Uh, you know, who's been my curatorial assistant. In fact, you know, we have traveled uh, also to many places. So the structure was, I mean, you know, we were, you know, allowed to give a, a good amount of production grant as per the proposal of the student. I mean, they can be ambitious. I mean, they, I mean, we have given huge grants to the students. We, were, we have given them like, I mean, travel grants to move around and research and produce a work. And we also gave them travel grant to kind of come to Goa and, uh, you know, and we did a residency. I mean, you know, we did, we invited them a week before the festival and they came and engaged and we did workshops and we did their side slideshows. And, uh, uh, you know, they were, you know, in fact, I mean, you know, they were growing up as, uh, as an interesting community. So I'm not actually going much more, you know, detail into like, I mean, each uh, 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 years participants. I mean, I've selected them I mean, because of the time constraints to kind of, you know, to tell this whole story. Uh, what I have done is like, I mean, I have selected, you know, a few works uh, to, 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 to bring you uh, 
the story of uh, curating and uh, making this uh, uh, exhibition. So what you're seeing on the screen is like Sher Ali uh, from Afghanistan. I mean, you know, this work is titled The Embodiment of Immateriality. I mean, so this is actually a kind of a, in a certain sense of a mindset. I mean, even today, I mean, in, I'm in a post-COVID uh, you know, crisis. I mean, I've been talking to many youngsters. They're feeling the same thing. I mean, you know, there is a certain sense of immateriality. I mean, there is, they're feeling like I'm in a certain sense of purposelessness. You know, so it's, it, it's interesting, like, I mean, maybe to start with this work. So Sher Ali is actually an artist. I mean, he's a very sensitive uh, uh, one of the, I mean, he has a studio uh, in the outskirts of Kabul. Uh, and uh, he works literally in isolation in a, in a very interesting community. Uh, in a very spaced out uh, location. And he's a very sensitive person and uh, with a very sharp uh, political point of view. He mainly uh, works uh, with miniatures, but when I invited him, he took this opportunity to make this large installation with ice and he created it three times at the site and the serendipity was supporting him to kind of produce it again and again. And uh, you know, you know, for me, I mean, it was a strange memory, you know, of also visiting his studio uh, in Kabul, because, uh, you know, we went in a car and, you know, like we spent almost two hours talking to him, you know, seeing his work. And uh, when we came back, you know, these are the stories like, I mean, the strange stories which we experience when you travel in the subcontinent. I mean, so when we came back, I mean, our driver was like, I mean, almost like, I mean, pale and, uh, and we got into the car and we started driving. But he said that when we checked with him, he said, I mean, he was very scared because that particular location, uh, you know, along with them in its isolation, he was scared because uh, he is from a different ethnic community. So he was like, I mean, you know, literally, you know, you know, uh, uh, I am mean, trying to kind of tell him sorry that I mean for you know taking too much time, and uh, and uh, and we did that. I mean, we did. Uh, you know, uh, visited many studios and you know traveled uh, uh, in Kabul was like I mean very interesting. You know, we filled our experience. I mean, you know, one of uh, the important sites we visited was like Panjshir Valley, and you know, went and paid homage to you know Ahmed Shah's uh, mausoleum, and I mean, he's like one of the heroes of Afghanistan. And we visited Kabul University. It's an amazing you know campus, and it has got an art uh, uh, you know department, and you know music and you know, many other things. And one exciting memory is that I'm mean, visiting the National Museum, you know, so it is filled with Buddha statues, I mean, Buddhist narratives. And it carries that, I mean, heavy load of, uh, you know, civilizational memories. We spoke to a lot of school children who had come to kind of visit them. I and so it was very interesting that, I mean, their curiosity to know that when they met in, uh, inside in the museum and they were asking us, I mean, how things are there. So, in this particular work, which you are seeing, uh, that Sherali is like coming, I mean, he's telling us that you know the ideologies gets formed over you know the gradual process, just like a wall of bricks. Once created, it often becomes a barrier, you know, and needs to be questioned. I mean, that's like a very constant argument in it. So the ice wall created here, actually, you know, we, we all know that it melts on itself, but allowing us to see a space beyond and beyond ideologies and borders. So it's like uh, in one way, you know, an embodiment of uh, immateriality. So now I come to another artist from, uh, you know, uh, Afghanistan, her name is Latifa Atai, a very interesting youngster. The work is titled, you know, Thousand uh, Individuals. Uh, uh, this actually, you know, what I spoke about the driver actually reflects in this particular work because, uh, you know, there is a very constant conflict between these ethnic minorities there. I mean, so she's also trying to erase that in this work. And these passport size uh, pictures are like masked, uh, you know, here uh, with embroidery, you know, that has a traditional, uh, that has been like traditionally been used for, you know, uh, you know, not 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 just for decoration, you know, but a but a mythical. Uh, you know, here she is like, I mean, bringing a kind of a, a, a sense of a mythical protection. You know, so it's just, uh, you know, it's a very different way of like, I mean, applying a kind of uh, you know, a tradition into you know a contemporary project. So against all these exclusions and deprivations, see the deprivations and uh, expectations. See what the artist does. I mean, if you talk to her. I mean, she talks about pain, you know, the untold stories that the society refuses to see 
and here otherwise. I mean, she's somebody who studied in Pakistan and, you know, lives, you know, a very different kind of a, an interesting, you know, lives in a very different cultural junction. So, so this, uh, this is another a detail of this uh, particular work. Now I'm taking you to, you know, Sri Lanka. Uh, this is an artist uh, named uh, Vijitaran. Uh, and uh, it's you know somebody who's very very dear to me. I mean you know we we, we call and you know, we talk quite often. And he's from Kilinochi. I mean so this is a work called Last Moments. But uh, some interesting aspects of this engaging with Vijitaran was Vijitaran was uh, you know one of our guide when Amardalal and myself visited Jaffna. And in fact, he told us many stories and he took it and he took us to sites of uh, memory and violences and uh, places where the army did its brutal acts of genocide. And in fact, his family has lost many members and, uh, and, and he and many others survived through, you know, the many ways of like, I mean, escaping, like running, you know, cycling, hiding, uh, hiding in the bungers. And he was actually developing a language when I met him in 2016, he was working on it. I mean, so uh, I invited him next year in 2017 and to be, to be part of it. And, you know, so in this, like, I mean, you know, he shares a trauma of that Elam war uh, that, you know, we experienced, you know, by, you know, the massive displacements through, uh, you know, I mean, we actually experienced it through the, you know, uh, the, the sense of displacement, you know, through this uh, uh, particular works. So, so this was one of the entry uh, from uh, Sri Lanka. And this is Jasmine. This work is Spence's. Uh, Jasmine is another artist, like, I mean, you know, who's been, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it started even showing in uh, India. And uh, uh, she works uh, quite, you know, interestingly on the idea of, again, fences. Uh, and, uh, you know, see her drawings, like, I mean, these are like I mean, very intricately sketched fences and uh, barbed wires. And, and some of the drawings you see this palm tree, coconut, uh, you know, fronds. And uh, just to put you into kind of a simple context that, I mean, you know, so she tells you stories that I mean, making fence became more important than making home because whatever property they got, I mean, they were trying to be very protective. So her, her all research and work revolves around that. So, so that, I mean, you know, with Jasmine also, it was very interesting because I mean, at the age of two, you know, she was, uh, you know, escaped with her family from Jaffna because of, uh, you know, uh, the war. And they were, and they went and lived in a remote village in Wavnia. So me and uh, Dr. C.S. Venkateshwaran actually visited her parents, you know, as we were traveling, and it was one of the, you know, the best moments. I mean, the parents felt so good uh, that, you know, some of her, her friends came home. And, uh, and in the last visit, I remember, uh, you know, the Sri Lankan artist uh, Shanadhan uh, took us uh, to the area that where Jasmine's family used to live. I mean, that the churches which are destroyed, you know, the, 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 the big bungalows which are demolished and small huts made inside these fallen homes, compounds. Inside the fallen homes, there are people living. So it was almost like a kind of a site. So another interesting thing is that, I mean, as the project started building up, I mean, there was a community building up. So there's a place called Archive in Jaffna. And the last time when I went, there were around 30 youngsters waiting for us to show their portfolios. I mean, you know, in, in fact, Jasmine coordinated. I mean, Jasmine, uh, the poet Ahilan and, you know, the Shanadhan and coordinated those kind of, you know, so they are also looking for opportunities to kind of show in India. I mean, because they are also thinking that, I mean, you know, these are very interesting routes to kind of, you know, get their stories out. So this is uh, Amartas. Amartas is again, you know, from Sri Lanka, but he lives in Switzerland. So when I met poet Ahilan, I asked him, like, I mean, myself and uh, that trip was like, I mean, me and uh, uh, Dr. C.S. Venkatesh, and I asked him about uh, the Sri Lankan photographers, but he said, you know, the world has seen Sri Lanka through the gaze of, uh, you know, the Western media, and Sri Lankan photographers did many of the work, but most of them were killed and or escaped the country. So Amartas is, uh, you know, one of... Uh, you know, those uh, kind of artists. I don't think, I mean, I need to do much explanation about these particular works. And uh, now I'm going into, you know, Kabiraj Lama. Uh, he's from Nepal. 
and uh, this work is this work is very funny because uh, it's a, it's a work titled uh, you know uh, irritating machine so he's a printmaker so he makes this prints and also makes this light box i mean so we commissioned uh, this project with him so it's it's a series of woodcut portraits you know of 13 nepali politicians who have served office as prime ministers in the past 25 years so you know the you know the frequency you know of political change which is happening so it's like i mean you know this brings in like i mean a kind of blueprint of you know social chaos unrest and unsettling you know society so and there, there were many other projects like i mean i remember you know one project which talk, spoke about you know earthquake a, a site that pre earthquake and post earthquake we had a video project and uh, you know these are also sites that i mean you know we got very good research support and you know like infrastructure i mean they, they some of the people used to literally take us around i mean sangeeta tapa you know who was one individual like i mean you know he helped us in you know furthering our research and this is a work by mek limbu again from nepal and uh, see when we think of migration you know so in 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 terms of uh, so we used to always think as you know uh, individuals like i mean you know people going to middle east you know the, or you know the pakistanis or bangladesh coming to middle east and now in recent times i mean we started listening to kind of multiple stories but uh, this is actually a story about uh, you know making those father you know it's it's almost like a visual diary you know of a relationship between his father uh, and uh, and make limbu and uh, see if you look at uae as a place that i mean you know that there are 150 different communities or nationalities living there it's a, it's almost like a kind of a site of you know different kinds of coming together and uh, you know engaged with you know because of economic migration and other other, other issues so meg is like i'm mean, showing in this project very intimate recordings you know uh, letters the conversation with his father the photographs you know social gathering celebrations and the many things i mean in fact he also shows a lot of documentation paper, document papers you know like so documents that i mean you know which uh, belongs to his family to which actually gives you a sense of you know mass exodus and the traffic of labor uh, and uh, their memories so so it's almost like i mean this work was almost like an archive you know uh, which takes you uh, or uh, the you know to 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 the stories of migration so this is a uh, uh, another work that uh, which is again from you know the another part of the subcontinent ritu sattar and along with the uh, baul singer uh, an artist mohammed uh, aruj ali so uh, ritu is from uh, uh, bangladesh and this work is titled uh, is it the time you let me go so this particular work you know actually brings together it's also a tribute to you know uh, you know one of the this verse is actually taken uh, from the teachings from uh, which still survives orally you know passed on you know through the poems of lalan fakir i mean is 18th century mystic so they every day evening they used to every day i mean every evening they used to perform at the site and you know like uh, uh, you know Uh, ritu goes into kind of very meditative very contemplative uh, uh, you know expressions so this is a work like i mean you know which brings in like i mean you know through the music and other cultural traditions poetry and uh, you know the hindu vaishnava islamic or sufi or buddhist traditions that i mean it brings together you know a, a universal brotherhood humanism and oneness i mean that's something like i mean ritu you know wanted to kind of communicate through the work so this is again a very interesting political project ahmed rasul i'm only showing one image of that this is called memories of political belonging so ahmed this one artist to i mean is a photographer who teaches now at counter photo i mean it's one of the alternate photography institutions in dhaka and uh, and uh, uh, which follows a kind of strong tradition that shahidul alam which be- began with the patshala so this is madur canteen as the title says that i mean you know uh, uh, the madur canteen the beauty boarding and the coffee house so this is these are i mean he is showing that i mean these were the alternate sides that where the cultural political and uh, conversations used to happen these were their hangouts 
because of the lack of democratic you know the political uh, discourses in recent times they are all losing it i mean so he's actually shown many sites like i mean chobir hart is another site which he had in the, in, in 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 the documentation so so the actually you know ahmed comes with a kind of completely a, you know a different kind of uh, documentation of sites of their early engagements with freedom and conversations which is no more available there so also in bangladesh i mean i would like to thank i mean you know samdani foundation i mean you know they also you know the moment you land i mean you know so they they they, they take care of you i mean they 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 connect you with artists and you know like i mean they they also like to support and engage it's not just helping me i mean they want to really help their artists to get uh, you know uh, better opportunities this is a work uh, from bhutan uh, a very interesting youngster who works with traditional ways of making art she lives in timpu and uh, bhutan and this particular work interests me a lot because you know it gives uh, you know audience you know from through a traditional language i mean uh, visually uh, to understand that i mean you know a stage to consider how the reproduction the re representation of the icons created in a scenario reflecting society its behavior i mean if you start from the first uh, you know tiger you look at the last tiger in the bottom right i mean so the you know everything was normal you know there was one instance there was a disruption in the third line uh, then the suspicion starts i mean so that's like i mean it's a very interesting narrative so i thought i mean you know it was a very interesting project to kind of show uh, in the context so this is another work i mean it's i'm showing it because i mean there are many other projects by minzaur uh, o that i mean we showed in, uh, in goa this i am showing that i mean this is you look at the eyes you look at the curiosity in them so this is much before that i mean zoom and you know like i mean you know the uh, video conferences began so this is you know the rohingyan you know you know uh, the migrants like i mean you know who is like i mean who doesn't have any place to go and uh, they are desperately like i mean you know trying to kind of say hello communicate you know because these are all camps you know these are all like i mean you know almost like uh, uh, the camps where they are put and they are trying to connect with some of their relatives who have uh, you know gone out and to other countries like whether it is bangladesh or you know indonesia or thailand and other places i thought it's it's a, it, it was i mean i'm not showing the other works which was there but this i thought i mean in times like this it's interesting to show and this is a work by sajad malik and sajad malik's work is titled the spectacle and he is an artist from kashmir and uh, sajad is actually a, you know a, almost like today like is a world renowned uh, graphic novelist i mean so he had one major book called munu and uh, and he and this book also like i mean you know which we commissioned that uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a graphic novel specially created for our show and which just shows the account uh, of kashmir and its people i don't think i mean i need to talk uh, about these projects so much in detail but we was we all quite aware about it. uh and uh, this is partha sen gupta an artist from uh, calcutta so partha has a very mixed uh, lineage i mean you know his parents were in uh, have gone through a kind of a, a cross cultural uh, upbringing so partha is one artist i mean i met i mean you know much before this nrc and all those movements started coming in who started in depth this research details about the emotional turmoil the people are going through i mean regardless of uh, you know their religions i mean even partho as uh, uh, as a person from you know uh, uh, a hindu community or I mean, he 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 used to tell me stories that there is you know un- unsettling effect in my family because you know we are also looking out for documents so it was very interesting conversation we had a uh, you know a very interesting project which we showed in uh, uh, zohar so this is vipin vijay uh, vipin vijay you must all be knowing that i mean he is one of the uh, you know well known film makers from kerala so but we commissioned a very interesting project because he is somebody who is very much interested in 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 understanding you know museum spaces and he wanted to understand like i mean archaeological artifacts and its meanings you know he was intrigued by the idea of terracotta you know so he was also intrigued by the sites of like i mean you know uh, 
you know archaeological uh, uh, you know like so he went on documenting like i mean you know in chatisgarh you know he, he visited the megalithic sites in chatisgarh he went to the excavation sites in kerala and he also went to andhra pradesh to kind of you know to to, to see the paleolithic past so he was bringing like i mean completely a kind of a different kind of civilizational memory into the last edition of uh, uh, serendipity project that where it in, invoked i mean many possibilities of furthering you know uh, one's own research so this is uh, another image from his film these are like stills from the film so th this is an artist like i mean from uh, you know uh, baroda uh, the name is shreya shukla and uh, this work is titled excerpts uh, from the case study of an elephant man so she's a very she was the youngest artist so far uh, in the uh, uh, the yaksam coordinate project so she passed out from baroda baroda you know two years ago and she was also part of the students biennial that's how i came to know about this work but this work is interesting because i mean what she's trying to do i mean she's actually you know it's very interesting to converse with her i mean because she's a very thinking youngster and she said i mean it's a very simple project i mean i am actually painting against the notions and repulsions people have against defacement scarring mutilation ruin uglification you know uh, defect imperfection and why do people you know why can't people you know accommodate i mean you know those kind of uh, so she is enacting with a sense of like i mean ugliness sense of you know an ugly act i mean it's almost like a protest i mean she's a very interesting you know artist according to me so we have so this is jagdish tamineni uh, lives in is a good he does a lot of good cuts and other prints he lives in visakhapatnam so studied in baroda and he also teaches in visakhapatnam now and uh, i think i don't need to go into much details about this I and mean, i think the humor is enough so this is another work i mean the last work which i am showing uh, in this uh, in particular series this is biju ibrahim this was a project that i mean biju was a uru residency artist and uh, he was actually you know uh, brought in to kind of do a very in depth research about the human settlement where i said that there are 40 different communities living together in uh, uh, in fort kochi and matanjeri area so this is one project that where the artist was engaging with a neighborhood and also the communities to kind of understand the spirit of their coexisting their economic differences their value systems you know their their, their systems of you know their cultural lineages the histories so this project actually you know got a lot of attention i mean so this was shown and uh, uh, in serendipity art festival in fact there is a film short film made on it uh, you know letter from india which is produced by two youngsters uh, uh, from uh, uh, bangalore I mean. and uh, yeah this is one project i mean i would like to end uh, you know from this uh, you know particular uh, uh, section of work which i am sharing and uh, this is actually you know this was also a work which encapsulated the idea of you know communities and neighborhood so i would like to kind of you know to 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 conclude uh, uh, by i mean am i good with time yes riyas please go ahead yeah so i'm just uh, you know concluding it by saying because young subcontinent project is something which uh, i'm very much uh, you know deeply you know researching in and i'm i'm continuing my conversations with many institutions around and uh, the idea is to kind of understand the trajectory you know so how do you take it forward i mean so the idea is to take the you know the trajectory of art practice in south asia into you know a much more uh, in a visible context i mean also you know what are the you know uh, the contemporary art practices you know the situation of i mean or we say that i mean how do we situate uh, contemporary art practices practice within the border culture or border you know the or, or the or the geographical uh, uh, you know uh, boundaries across the world i mean so it's just uh, and, and also another feel i have is that uh, you know how do you build empathy and build an appreciate an appreciating spirit among the practices uh, to to support uh, the art productions so it's a it's an interesting project i think you know it ho i hope that i mean it allows uh, to 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 reimagine the cultural sphere of uh, uh, the the subcontinent i mean uh, 
uh, to understand the subcontinent through uh, artistic uh, uh, practices. Uh, because it's important to build uh, uh, these frameworks of practicing or historicizing and uh, appreciating the art of South Asia. So before I end, uh, I would like to end this uh, particular presentation uh, with a contemplation on, uh, you know, an anecdote from, you know, Sri Narayana Guru's life. Uh, as you all know that, I mean, you know, in, in the early 20th century, I mean, you know, the, uh, Sri Narayana Guru, uh, you know, through him, like, I mean, you know, uh, many community formations happened, uh, especially in Kerala. So there was a fight uh, between two major groups and came up uh, for argument about, uh, you know, I mean, it was almost like uh, uh, they came to argue and, you know, consult also Sri Narayana Guru about the, sh the, the way, the sharing of wealth, sharing of one's own wealth or family wealth or the wealth of the community. So one group, you know, started arguing that, I mean, it should be done through the matrilineal way. And the other started arguing that, I mean, it should be done in a patrilineal way. So Guru in his, you know, very contemplative, meditative way that, I mean, with maybe a smile on his face. And uh, he replied, I would propose Ayal Pakkatayam. The Ayal Pakkatayam means like, I mean, in English, I can say that neighborlineal way. I mean, not matrilineal, not patrilineal, do it in a neighborlineal way. So I think, you know, the takeaway from that kind of a, you know, story from Guru's life, I feel, I mean, good neighbors make, you know, you know I mean, you know, our, our life better. And uh, I think we should all work, you know, towards that, I mean, as artists, as political figures, or you know, as social figures. And that's, you know, uh, my hope that, I mean, you know, such things happens because by producing that, I mean, because by producing, you know, such an atmosphere, Guru must have thought that, I mean, you know, I'm taking, you know, lead from him because he, he must have believed that, I mean, you know, that's how, you know, you create a metaphysics of uh, neighborhood, I mean, you know, a, a kind of a beautiful site. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, it was fun talking. Uh. Thank you, Riyas. If you could just uh, turn off the screen share and turn on your video, please, for the Q&A session. Yes, nice to see you again. Yeah. And uh, thank you for that very, very uh, interesting and well thought out, deep thinking uh, presentation that you put forth, along with a lot of thought provoking questions that have now uh, come my way, which I shall uh, you know, begin by asking you. So uh, I would first like to pose to you uh, a question that has come in from a very, very uh, dear, uh, you know, friend and uh, uh, well-wisher of Gallery G and Sandeep and Yatajali Mani Foundation. She's a 75-year-old artist from Chennai. Her wow. name is Lakshmi Krishnamurti. So she has two questions which she has posed. Uh, firstly, she wants to know the size of the painting fences. Uh, she finds the rendering really amazing. So she's curious about the size of that painting. I think Jasmine's work. Full, full imperial size of a paper. Full imperial size of paper. Okay. And uh, of course, she compliments you uh, greatly on your, uh, you know, invigorating talk, especially, uh, you know, appreciating the fact that all of the paintings and the display has come alive with your dialogues and says that, you know, the different dimensions are really beautiful. Thank so you. Thank this you. comes from a... A uh, 76 year old well wisher of Gallery G, who I think is now one of our most uh, ardent webinar attendees, never misses a single one, and very, very talented artistically. Probably, you know, we should arrange a meeting with you sometime. Uh, so, a few, a few questions that, uh, you know, we would like to pose uh, to you. Um, you showed us a lot of uh, imagery from the Young Subcontinent Project, some very diverse artists and art practices. Uh, what commonality do you see in Indian art, you know, as compared to artwork from Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and the other countries that, you know, you uh, have visited for this young, young subcontinent project and artists whom you have met? Can you point out one or two of the commonalities? See, uh, one is that, I mean, you know, the reflection of, uh, you know, uh, shared political concerns. I mean, you know, so maybe, you know, uh, what I felt not just with India, the commonality between uh, 
the concern of an artist from Kabul to an artist in Jaffna. You know, the commonality between them. I, I can say that, I mean, you know, in Indian art also, you know, such kind of expressions of angst and uh, politics happen. So there are, you know, uh, we see the thing is that, I mean, you know, I showed an artist uh, from Timbu called Zimdri. She practices traditional way of making art and she also does, you know, she has, but there is no contemporary art institution in, uh, uh, in uh, a place like, uh, you know, Bhutan. Uh, but the interesting thing is that, I mean, they try to, you know, post academics, they try to become contemporary. But what I've seen in India is like, I mean, you know, we have categorized it. I mean, you know, so historically, if you really look at, I mean, when Nandalal Bose started, you know, art and craft institution in Calcutta, so there was a, uh, you know, there was an attempt to kind of marry both and then it fails. You know, you come to KCS Panikas, Chennai, you know, uh, you know, Palagramam, you know, Cholamandal Palagramam. Yeah. Uh, Cholamandal uh, Artist Village. Uh, uh, so you see the same, you know, in a later stage that, I mean, you know, artists start questioning that, I mean, because why should I study five years in the, in the name of contemporary art? So the commonalities, I would say that, I mean, there are subjective commonalities, but I wouldn't say that, I mean, you know, uh, the stylizations like, I mean, you know, so you can start equating like, I mean, anybody's work with anybody in the subcontinent because political concerns I've seen like, I mean, very similar. So there are, I think there are a huge list of uh, commonalities in that school. So uh, given that as a leading, uh, you know, point to what you just mentioned, have you and, uh, you know, uh, peer group, your artistic peer group, been able to do something to change that learning teaching module that we currently follow in art colleges in India? Oh, I, that's why I said, I mean, you know, in my engagement, uh, you know, uh, when I was working with the Students Biennial and associating with Foundation for Indian Art Education and also FICA, Foundation for Indian Contemporary Arts, like when the Vidya Shivdas uh, takes charge. Uh, many conversations were there. I mean, how do you, you know, engage uh, with these institutions and change, uh, uh, you know, uh, the education structures? How do you rework on syllabuses? So what I realized is that, I mean, it's a complex site uh, to engage. When you talk to, like, I mean, people like, I mean, you know, uh, Gulam Mohammed, uh, you know, Sheikh, or, you know, Vivan Sundaram, or, uh, you know, Indra Pramitroy, Shiva, Shiva Kumar, who are all engaged with this uh, FIAE. So they're finding it very difficult to kind of, you know, to bring in the transformative effect uh, in institutions because one, it needs a lot of infrastructural change. You need a lot of mindset changing. You need a lot of structural changes, you know, but who teaches, you know, art. Uh, so I, I think that, I mean, it will be possible. See, the problem is like in Kerala, we have, you know, three art institutions, I mean, you know, the issue is that, I mean, you know, it's under technical education. Right. So unless and until you change it into, uh, you know, the subjects like humanities and social studies and in other aspects, because art has become so multidisciplinary, you know, art has become science, art has become poetry, you know, it's art has evolved. And, you know, so it's, 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 a, it's a different kind of expression. So we need to, you know, we look at, you know, how do we teach art I mean, so because in recent history of India like I mean many artists who came about uh, in becoming like international figures I mean I don't think they all came from art institutions Absolutely. they came from different sites and I think probably that level of disruption has not yet reached the minds of the policy makers hence we you know have that lag behind thinking uh, you know faction which is the artists of uh, you know the community and the uh, you know, doing faction, which is your policy making side that is sitting in government and in other, uh, you know, places of power. So probably that, uh, you know, level of disruption should also come in there, that disruptive mindset should, you know, that's, take shape there as well. That's one reason, like, on while I was doing the presentation, I, before coming to, you know, the Young Subcontinent Project, I went through the Students Vinyl Project. Hmm. Because, you know, you actually, what so what we do as students of learning art, I mean, we always, uh, you know, enrich ourselves from alternate spaces. Right. We engage with museums, we travel 
travel and you know we learn and you know we study history you know like well, why do we uh, learn aesthetics but a systemic uh, you know or shift it needs uh, a lot of investment because we need i mean i would say that i mean we need good bureaucrats we right. need you know who understands aesthetics the importance of aesthetics in uh, you know changing policies so and uh, maybe i can say that i mean you know in kochi uh, what happened was there was a you know a coming together of uh, artistic vision political will and uh, a bureaucratic wisdom it all came together you know you put together and assemble something and then you, you, you form uh, an institution to change the perceptions so so kochi became a site of learning because of that so so many people learn art through alternate sites today right? so yeah but we need i mean you know we need an infrastructural change we need a lot of investments into you know art education so going by that can you outline some of the challenges that you have faced and how uh, you know that has increased your empathy towards these subcontinent artists now i feel that i mean you know uh, in, in many of my visits i mean what i felt was that i mean uh you know uh the scare which they all live with i mean you know so for example i mean i went to me and amrit went to latifa atai's uh, studio uh then we went to other places uh then we heard within you know an hour or two that where there was a bomb blast uh, in a place that where we ate food i mean closer to that see so they they lived in certain insecurities i mean so you go to jaffna they live in insecurities and denials you go to you know a place like kabul i mean you know people migrate from there i mean they live in germany and in other places yeah. they are all artists living in exile i mean you go to pakistan i mean you know the the freedom of expression is like i mean you know contained bangladesh is becoming like that and uh, you know these places uh, i feel that i mean you know uh, the one needs to kind of uh, you know uh, study it a little bit more to also heal it i mean so the thing the, the thing which you can do is that uh, which i have also addressed it in the presentation that i mean so we go as an institution to to select the artists to show in india but we also try to work with the local institutions to kind of connect them so what happens is like i mean you know if they realize that there are international curators coming to kind of select their artists they also understand the importance of supporting and helping so you need to work collectively together in changing infrastructure and uh, you know changing and giving them much more opportunities so one thing which in common which i felt was that they all look up to india i mean so mm-hmm. you know so whenever wherever you travel you know they have an aspiration that i mean you know, to to show in india you know, so uh, which uh, uh i'll tell you one incident that from the expressions of people i mean i flew in from uh, uh, kabul uh landed in delhi uh, with my friend uh, and uh, and the, the the aeroplane was full of uh, you know 80 to 90% were full of uh, afghanis coming to meet their relatives or you know doing some business and get medical treatment right i mean a 70% of them were coming to do medical treatment but the contrast which i felt i mean you know leaving from a very you know uh, security zone of kabul airport they come and you know listen to a bollywood song and you know it's like flush airport and i felt that i mean i was walking with them and they i could see their expression oh wow i mean you know so they came to a different kind of a freedom so this you know i have felt it i mean when i went to dubai you know like um, i mean 20 years ago so it's a similar you know experience now we have that experience so as we grow as a nation i think we should also you know uh, take along like the guru said I mean, you know, so we should share with our neighbor you spoke about the fear that you find that the, the fear that these artists live with you know in uh, certain other parts of the subcontinent and then earlier in the very early part of your presentation you spoke about mumbai and how mumbai is becoming or has been this you know city that teaches you artistically can you give us a few examples i mean you have lived in mumbai most of your life now can you give us a few examples of that what what has mumbai taught you no the one of the important thing mumbai you know taught me is that i mean you know uh, the spirit of resilience you know you you get back 
I mean, as to if uh, anything happens. I mean, we used to, you know, uh, because uh, we used to jokingly say that, I mean, you know, the spine of, uh, you know, Mumbai city is, uh, uh, it's metro rail, metro rail. And immediately if anything happens, I mean, that spine starts working. So that spine is something which branches out to two different streams of Mumbai city. So it's not just that. I mean, you know, it is that the cosmopolitan spirit, the, the possibilities of like, I mean, seeing different kinds of aspects of creativity. You have cinema at one side, you have theater, you have art, you know, you have uh, better possibilities. And you see, constantly see, you know, me being like I'm an artist who initially started engaging with because uh, I came for learning textile design, but there's also a shift, you know, in, 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 in my understanding of social premise. So I continued, you know, uh, and uh, my confidence is like, I mean, you know, uh, uh, from many, many levels, I mean, I had made great friends, you know, so that also like, you know, makes a good community. Um, yeah, I think I, what I learned from Bombay, I would always say that, I mean, the resilience, you know, that I mean, you, know, so you get back onto the track. So you've had the good fortune of meeting some amazing artistic talent from across the globe. Have you ever thought of documenting uh, these experiences in a form outside of, you know, your artistic expressive, uh, expressive speciality forms? Not really. I mean, you know, so I think uh, maybe the COVID time, what I have been doing now is that I'm revisiting my works, which I produced since last 15 years. So mm -hmm. I'm actually, re I'm studying them. In fact, uh, trying to understand its, uh, uh, you know, the meanings of image in a, a better context. So that I'm doing, I mean, but uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, Young Subcontinent is a very well-documented uh, research project because uh, we, are, we were a good team. And Anuj Daga, I was mentioning, the curatorial assistant, is a, is, a, is a very interesting mind. So he keeps everything proper and we can, you know, we also have a blog and uh, they keep engaging, there's a WhatsApp group. So there's a conversation happening. They share their you know, works, which they do. So yeah, I think uh, otherwise, no. I mean, you know, no other projects. So whatever I have engaged, otherwise maybe in the since last 10 years, it is recorded in a very different level. I mean, something like, I mean, I sometimes enjoy, you know, very, uh, you know, intangible, uh, uh, you know, memories. Have you thought so, of writing, Riyas? Pardon me? Have you thought of writing? No, not really. I mean, I do writing for, I mean, some uh, nowadays, like we have started uh, with Sudarak uh, Olve, one of the uh, very, very famous uh, photographer. We've started a magazine called Samyak Drishti, which looks into the margins of uh, Indian image making. So we are coming up actually with the third edition for the India Photo Festival, which is happening uh, this year. It's online, but it's one of the most reputed photo festivals, which happens in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah, I'm writing for that now. I'm, in fact, I'm writing a small piece for that article, that uh, issue on image and its meaning. And uh, yeah, I did uh, write in the last issue about Parag Sonargare. Mm. You've seen his work. I've seen his work. He was also part of the first edition of the Young Subcontinent. Yes. So I've not so shown. I meant, I meant, you know, writing to document your experiences because your way of expressing yourself is not only uh, very deep and sometimes direct, but also very eloquent in its own way. I do it in my art, I mean, but uh, I think, uh, you know, I hope, uh, you know, somebody, someday, someday will understand it. <laughs> so I'll close the session with one more question that has come in from Mrs. Lakshmi Krishnamurti. A very leading question because she's an artist who practices traditional art forms only. So she asks, what kind of a space does traditional art form have in the Kochi Biennale? Yeah, I would say that, I mean, one of the important projects which we had, uh, which celebrated uh, uh, in the 2016 edition was a work by, you know, an artist you show, uh, showed recently, uh, you know, Sadanandan Marsh. Sadanandan, yeah. So he actually did one of the very interesting projects with Kerala Mural. Uh, on Paraivatta Pandirugulam. So it's a kind of a, you know, a very interesting mythological uh, you know, narrative about Kerala. The people believe that, I mean, you know, it has got a, you know, a social structure. And I am, I'm very much fascinated with those stories because I like craft. So, uh, you know, so Paraivatta Pandirugulam has, you know, very interesting lineage towards craft, like Kvedambachan and, you know, other people. 
so yeah i think uh, kochi did kochi also introduced uh, uh, contemporary artists uh, to work along with uh, you know craft few projects were made around that it's not just the local craft i mean the craft artists who are working with craft i mean i, rem I don't remember the name of the indonesian artist showed last year but craft rigo 23 i i showed i mean you know, he produced all his work with his you know the, the local craft and skill in kochi but the work is spoke about you know the colonial atrocities the you know uh, the portuguese did in kochi called the kochi tower so there have been people using traditional languages to kind of uh, articulate uh, contemporary voices and that's how uh, kochi has uh, you know responded to you know craft traditions i think i i think it's an interesting question because uh, these questions were also asked uh, since many you know people at very important junctions i mentioned nandlal bose i mentioned uh, kcs panika you know, so they have asked these questions uh, uh, you know, very strongly you know, so so thank you riyas thank you for that very interesting session i'm sure uh, we have we have a lot of people who are watching live on facebook as well so we will be getting in a few more comments and you know a few more uh, maybe questions from them which we will take offline with you whenever we chat with you next but thank you and over to you geeta thank you thank you very much archana and to everybody at sjmf ravi archana shubha peter everybody who sort of uh, puts everything uh, together uh, to all the viewers on facebook who have been sending so many beautiful comments uh, riyas will collect it over the long weekend and i'll send it to you first thing on monday morning as an analytic so you can just enjoy your comments and have a great week to follow uh, so thank you for sharing part of your journey with us and uh, also sharing your journey with us um, it's a it's an ongoing association and it's something that we're very proud of so thank you very much uh, to all our viewers thanks once again for joining in today um, we took a little break because uh, of the the sera season and uh, we began with riyas uh, our next event is on uh, 5th of november and it's uh, called uh, speaking stones it's with um, namma bangalore citizen of 2019 uh, uh, udaya kumar pl and he's going to be talking about uh, some stones and inscriptions uh, that he has been uh, preserving and some of the stones and the inscriptions date back to the 7th century as back as that so i'm sure all of you will enjoy it um, invitations will come once again near a time uh, so look forward to welcome you uh, for that session as well uh, so with that i think i'm going to say thank you and goodbye and riyas thank you once again for a wonderful session all okay, the people thank came you thank you came, and we had no dropouts from the session so the session speaks for itself thank, thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye, and have Bye -bye. a happy, pleasant weekend. Yeah. Take care. Take care.